everyone, and welcome to Introduction to Ethics, Summer 2021 edition. What I'll be doing in this video is I'll be going over the course syllabus, explaining the parameters of the course, and also I'll be going into detail about the assignments and where to find them on Blackboard. Let's start by taking a look at the syllabus. So here we are in Blackboard. If we click on Course Info, syllabus is right here. Let's click on that, open it up. So I'm just going to go through a couple parts of the syllabus, making sure that things are clear. Let's make this a little bigger. So here we are, Introduction to Ethics. My email address is here. If you need to reach me for anything, burrist at atc.edu. And let's get into what this course is. So this course explores the major problems and questions of moral philosophy from ancient to modern times by critically evaluating and applying various ethical theories and principles to historical and contemporary moral dilemmas. Works of important philosophy shall be read. The basis for this inquiry is drawn from history, theories, and the application thereof, methods of reasoning, and this endeavor shall be carried forward to more recent thinkers and issues. Its thematic elements are contemporary, including the nature and abiding presence of philosophizing in human discourse, and this discipline's impact on current developments in science, the humanities, and political social order in world cultures. So what that means is we'll be dealing with the theoretical aspects of ethics, which is going to be, you know, some technical stuff. But also, even when we're doing the stuff that seems the most technical and the most abstract, it has particular application to stuff going on right now. Then, here are the things that you need to do for this online version of the class. Be prepared to read out of the required textbook, and I'll have some additional texts up on Blackboard as well. Listen to the occasional downloadable MP3 audio of lectures. So what you'll be doing is you'll basically listening, to, you'll be listening to MP3s of a lecture series from, a, from an in-person version of the class that was given a while back. And that's the reason for that is because that is just the easiest way to digest that information. So you can put it on your phone and listen to it. You can play it at a higher speed. It's just, it's much more easier to transmit that. I'll probably also be putting the lectures up on YouTube as well. Again, they're only audio, but I'll put them up there because it'll auto generate a transcript for the lectures too so you'll have that available for you so that will happen here in the next couple weeks all the all the audio content is already up and the accessory texts are already up on blackboard okay but those are two things that you're going to have to do here for this online version of the class occasionally i have videos that'll go up explaining assignments too but primarily it'll be to listen to those lectures and to read out of the book you'll also need to submit written assignments in blackboard which i'll go over in a little bit take quizzes in Blackboard, including a final exam, which we'll talk about in a little bit too. And you'll need to be able to retrieve and submit documents from and into Blackboard. The required textbook for the course is Lewis Podgeman's Moral Philosophy, fourth edition. Although I will say that most of the things that are in this textbook, the actual texts, the actual historical texts themselves are all in the public domain until we get to very, very contemporary stuff. So just keep that in mind. However, Podgeman's editorial aspects are, comp are not in the public domain and they are confined to this book and they're quite helpful. Okay, so what do I expect you to do in this course? The following things. Recall and identify the major thinkers, schools, core philosophical questions, terms, and concepts found in the history of ideas cross-culturally construed from ancient times of the contemporary world. So basically, be able to recall and label the things that I talk about in the class. So if I'm talking about Aristotle or Immanuel Kant or utilitarianism or virtue ethics, I don't expect you to know those things now, but I expect you to be able to at least recognize, oh, that thing he just described, that's virtue ethics, or that person, that would be Aristotle. Okay, not yet, but as we get through things, we'll do this gradually throughout the semester, be able to recall and identify those things. Two, interpret and explain core philosophical questions and concepts in terms that illustrate a comprehensive understanding thereof. A comprehensive understanding thereof for an introductory course. I'm not expecting anybody to have a PhD in ethics as we're going through this course, but to be able to at least say, okay, this is how utilitarianism was explained to me in class. Here's what utilitarianism is, and maybe here's some problems with that. Or here's why it's good, those kinds of things. Demonstrate that you know what you're talking about, at least insofar as we've talked about it in the class. Three, apply core philosophical questions and concepts to contemporary issues and personal experience. The stuff that we talk about matters very much, and it matters now. Show me how. And again, there'll be some assignments, namely the weekly analyses, where you'll have the opportunity to do just that. Four, compare and contrast related core philosophical questions and concepts and the correlative of thinkers and schools with which they are commonly associated. Know who's on what team. Later on in the course, you should be able to do things like, oh, John Stuart Mill, he's a utilitarian. Immanuel Kant, he's a deontologist. Aristotle, Kongse, they're into virtue ethics. And you'll be able to put them 
together, just like you might be able to put athletes onto, you know, when you hear an athlete's name, you might be able to put them into a particular team or league or sport. Five, justify a sound philosophical position on a topic or topics of contemporary human interest in the areas of knowledge, ethics, or human condition that integrates and logically demonstrates a synthesis in thought. What does that mean? Short version of that, when you do your writing assignments, the weekly analyses, just be prepared to back up what you're saying. One of the most important things about a philosophy class is learning how to back up what you're saying, not just take things at face value and say, oh, this is true because it's obviously true because I believe it. Great. Back it up. Think of yourself like you're in a courtroom. Back up what you're saying. Always support whatever your position is with evidence. And there are different kinds of evidence, to be fair. But make sure you're backing it up with something and not merely making an assertion. Email etiquette. Uh, if you send me an email, and this is in the syllabus here, I'm not going to go into this too much. Uh, the, the particulars are in here. Just make sure you identify who you are and what class you're in. Because I have more than one class, and sometimes people will be like, why is my grade this? And you'll be writing from a personal email where I have no idea who you are. So make sure you identify yourself. Hey, it's me, Tom Burris. I'm in your ethics class. When's this assignment due again? Or what exactly are we supposed to do here? Just, just communicate effectively if we're talking via email. Attendance policy. It's the policy of Aiken Technical College to encourage and support students in academic achievement and progress by adopting an 80% minimum attendance policy for all classes, albeit for this online class, your presence is only required for the final exam as such. So let me just say this as a rule. You should be checking in at least twice a week in terms of what's going on. Now the due dates of assignments are already labeled on this syllabus, so you know when everything's due. Usually after each quiz, there'll be like a dump of information saying, okay, here's what your next assignment is in order to prepare for quiz X. Here's the stuff that you should be doing. But just keep checking into Blackboard. Don't let, don't let, don't let a week go by where you're like, oh, I don't need to go in there and, and check and see what's going on. Make sure you're up to date on the assignments again. All the due dates are already here on the syllabus. I'm going to audibly say them out loud here in a little bit, but I want to make sure it's clear that I don't want you to get left behind. In an online course, it's, it's so easy. It's just, ah, I don't need to worry about it. I, and you can lose track of time. So I'm saying, please don't do that, especially in a summer course where things are slightly more compressed. Don't lose track of time. Academic dishonesty. So here's what it means. All forms of academic honesty, including but not limited to cheating on tests, plagiarism, collusion, and falsification of information will call for discipline. So what does that mean? So well, here's, and here's how, this is how Aiken Tech defines cheating. Okay, copying from another student's test. Again, it's online, probably not going to happen, but don't do it. Don't copy from someone else's test. Using materials during a test not authorized by the person giving the test. I'll go ahead and say this now. This is online, open book, open note, tests, quizzes. Collaborating with any person during a test without permission. Despite being open book, open note, don't team up. That's called collusion. Don't team up with others for the class. Uh, your work should be your own work. Knowingly obtaining using, buying, selling, transporting, or soliciting in whole or in part the contents of an unadministered test. Oh, so you found a test from 2009 uh, and you just try to turn that in or use its answers. Yeah, don't, don't do that. Okay, bribing any other person to obtain tests or information about tests. Don't do that. Substituting for another student or permitting any other person to substitute for oneself. So don't let someone else take a quiz as you and don't do that for someone else. And that's all cheating. And then two, now you, you, I have, and all the time I've been working for Aiken Tech, I've never had a problem with cheating. Never. I have had a problem with the second notion here, plagiarism. And I think oftentimes it's unwitting. That is to say, people don't realize that they're doing it. So I want to make sure it's very clear here and now. And this really only affects the written assignments. Not the quizzes, not the final exam, but the written assignments, the analyses. Plagiarism is defined as the appropriation of any other person's work and the unacknowledged incorporation of that work in one's own work offered for credit. So what happens in plagiarism is you have quoted, alluded, or paraphrased something else without giving a citation for it. Oh, I'm talking about this. I got it from this book. I got it from this website. But you don't say that you got it from this book or this website. You just use it without attribution. It's both lying and stealing at the same time. So make sure if you incorporate outside sources into your written work, that you include what those outside sources are. Don't just use them. So what happens is sometimes people, I've seen people take giant chunks straight from Wikipedia, okay, which don't, don't, don't do that. All right. But they'll take big chunks, stick it into their paper and then say, yes, this is my own work. I wrote this all by myself. 
when I can still see the links from Wikipedia in there. Like they, some people don't even bother to take that out. So don't do that. And sometimes it's not like people trying to do it on purpose. Sometimes people are quoting from somebody and they forget to put where they got it from. So just be very careful about where you get your stuff from if you use something else, which none of that is required for this course to use any outside sources for written for the written assignments for this class. None of it's required, but if you use it, make sure you're citing your sources. Now let's get into the assignments and where to find them. So first of all, you have six quizzes throughout the term, each worth 8% of your final grade. Okay, and they're always going to be, the quizzes are always gonna be multiple choice fill in the blank questions. First three quizzes are gonna be 10 questions, each worth 100%, and then the latter quizzes, four, five, and six, are gonna be worth 110% out of 100. That is, they each have a little bit of extra credit on the quiz as well. And it's always gonna be multiple choice fill in the blank questions from whatever block of material we're doing at the time. And let me go and explain the late policy. So quizzes are due on the day that they're due and I'll go ahead, like again, further in the syllabus, we can move right there. This is on page six of the syllabus. There's all the due dates for all the quizzes. Okay, quiz one is due the 18th of May. That's soon. And the last one is due the 23rd of July towards the end of the term. So they're all right here and basically what they're on and what we'll be reading for that. The first quiz, quiz one is due on the 18th of May. So let's go ahead and take a look at the late policy and then I'll explain where to find them. So you can turn in quizzes late, but you've got basically a 48 hour window to turn them in. So if you turn it like, oh, it's, oh, now it's May 19th and I turn in my quiz one. That's all right. It's a 10% penalty. So you turn it in, let's say you got everything correct on it, but you turn it in a day late. 10 points off, you still got an A, you got a 90. Okay, you turn it in two days late, 20% uh, penalty. Oops, I know it was due on the 18th, it's the 20th now. You still get it in, get all the questions right, you still got an 80. Any more than 48 hours though, the quiz is gone. Okay, and you cannot turn it in after 48 hours. And the reason for that is because what will happen is at 48 hours, the answer key for that quiz will pop up. And I'll show you where to find that right now. So here we are in Blackboard. If I go to assignments and I go to quizzes, you'll see there's quiz one. It's good to go. And the other quizzes will pop up throughout the semester when, when they're available. But then also right in the same subfolder, the quizzes subfolder, another folder will pop up that will say quiz answer guides. So a after 48 hours of when a quiz is due, the answer key will pop up, at so will pop up so you can review your answers. Additionally, while we're here in Blackboard, all the stuff that you need is also here under the Assignments tab. So, for example, for the first quiz, the stuff which is, has to do with a little bit on logic, all that stuff is here. For th There are slides for all the ethical theories that we're going to go into. All the audio lectures that I talked about are all here, already ready to go. There are some more in-depth textual analyses where I go in a little bit more detail on specific texts and explain them. Then the additional readings, all with their various subfolders throughout the semester are right here, ready to go. And then you'll notice two other folders here, weekly analyses and final exam. They're already here, like where to find them. So that's not going to change, but let's go back to the syllabus to explain what those are. So we talked about the quizzes. Like I said, we'll have like a section of material to do. The stuff for what you need to do for quiz one will be popping up today, for example. So to summarize, there are six quizzes, each worth 8% of your final grade. Then there are also this assignment, three two-page weekly analyses, also each worth 8%. So everything except for the final exam is worth 8%. Let me go ahead and say that. Every assignment is worth 8% with the exception of the final exam, which is worth 20%. So what are the weekly analyses? three times throughout the semester. And those three times are already at the bottom of this paragraph, the 4th of June, the 25th of June, and the 15th of July. So those are three other due dates. So, so far we have the six quizzes and their due dates are already on here. Here are the due dates for all the analyses. But so what are they? You will make a two page, and when I say two page, 12 point Times Roman Chicago manual style analysis of roughly a week's worth of class material. Okay, so basically talk about a week's worth of stuff. So what's, what is a week's worth of stuff? Two, three lectures worth of material. Uh, summarizing it in your own words. So this is not a research paper. All I'm wanting you to do is for you to recapitulate back to me what is something that we talked about. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm using weekly as a reference point there. It could be, it could be about less 
than that. It could be about one particular subject that you found interesting. I just want you to talk to me about it in your own words, analyzing what we talked about. Don't go off on a tangent like, oh, we were talking about ethics. That made me think about this one time where I was thinking about right or wrong. And I think it's right. And then you just go on a complete rant about something indirect. If now, it's not that you can't bring in your own personal experience. You can't just tie it carefully to what it is that you're talking about. But I'll see people go into that sometimes in their writing. But this should be your writing, not research, but your writing about analyzing something that we talked about in class. And again, there's a particular format that it needs to be, but there you have resources that'll help you out in that regard. And there are three of them. You'll do them again, June 4th, June 25th, and July 15th is when you'll turn those in. For this assignment, let me go and explain the late policy and on these, and then I'll show you your resources for this assignment. Just like the quizzes, 10 points off per day that they're late. However, here, you've got time to turn it in until the 10 point day expires. So the quizzes, there's an answer key to the quizzes, right? There's not really an answer key to these. So these, if you, you turn it in five days late, you got 50% off, okay? 10 points for each day. I mean, you, hypothetically, you could turn it in nine days late and get a 10% for it. And I'll say this, uh, something is better than nothing. So if, if you miss a due date and you're like, oh, man, I should have turned it in a couple days ago. This would have been good, but now I'm gonna get a 60 on it. Listen, the 60 is better than a zero. Turn something in. Okay, now let me, let's go back to Blackboard to look at the resources for this assignment. So here we are back in Blackboard. Go to assignments, go to weekly analyses. And you see, here's all three, already ready to go with all their due dates they're already in play it's already here all semester long and you'll notice you've got this first one has a bunch of extra stuff with it now this extra stuff here applies to the others as well but let me show you what you've got you've got four documents here the first one that i want to discuss is this paper formatting exemplar what this is is something that when you open it up it will show you what the format of the paper should look like it's basically an example of Here's how you should do this. Here's how you double space this. Here's the font that you should use. If you do use an outside source, here's how to incorporate it. And it goes into detail about that. I will be doing a specific separate video where I go into more detail about that assignment, but that's already there for you. So you can go and see what's the format supposed to look like? What am I supposed to do? Make it look like that. And then I've given three examples of weekly analyses from the past where the student's name has been removed. I've given an example of a good one, one that's decent, a bad one, and by bad, I mean like, oh, okay, it's okay. And then I gave an example of one that did just was not good, so terrible. So you have an example of, you have three examples of what I'm looking for. One that says good, bad, and terrible. So you can look at those. So look at the good one, am I doing something like this? So take a look at those. And again, I'll have a video on the weekly analyses that'll go into more detail about this assignment. Let's go back to the syllabus and look at the remaining assignments. So the next thing we need to talk about is the discussion board. So here's the assignment. It's also worth 8% of your final grade. Here, you'll have at least four to five complete sentences with at least three discussion board threads and all posts must be entered by end of day, Friday, July 23rd. So on the discussion board, what I want you to do is write at least four to five complete sentences within at least three of the discussion board threads. And the threads will be unveiled throughout the term. So if we go back to Blackboard, you've got this discussion board tab. There's already some stuff ready to go. Okay, the stuff that pertains to the quiz one assignment is here. The relationship between logic and ethics, and there's two threads already ready to go. You can go ahead and start on this today. I would go ahead and do the assign the quiz one assignment stuff first so you get some footing into what you're talking about, but there's already stuff in here that you could get started on for the discussion board. Then the final exam. Okay, so the final exam, which is worth 20% of your final grade as opposed to 8%. Everything else is worth 8%. Discussion board, 8%. Three weekly analyses, each worth 8%. Six quizzes, each worth 8%. Final exam worth 20%. And the final exam will function just like a quiz, except it's worth more and will have more questions. So it'll be cumulative, but it will only be questions from previous quizzes. So there will be no new questions on the final exam. It'll basically be a super quiz that's a review. So that wraps it up on the course introduction and overview. Again, if you have any questions, email me at burrist at atc.edu. And good luck on this summer term.